In today's video, we're going over my first trade of the day. It is Friday, March 27th. I am down about 13 pips in Euro AUD short. This is my fifth trade of the week. Monday, I won GBP JPY. Tuesday, I won Euro CAD. Wednesday, GBP USD. And then yesterday, I won my trade on Euro USD. So a lot of great moves this week. And this is now my third time trading a Euro pair. This one, however, is a little bit choppier than those other four trades this week. All four of those, if you go back and watch the replays, they were like right into profit, very, very pain-free with those trades. But this one here, a little choppy, a little volatile. You saw it was down 15, down 20, now I'm down 10, then I was just down five. So it's choppy right now, but I still like the risk reward setup here. So in the video, we're gonna break down what I liked about this, what I didn't like about it, and how all of that plays into the size that I take on this position. <laughs> So if you're new to the channel, my name is Austin Silver. I appreciate you being here. Do me a favor, make sure you subscribe down below. Make that way you don't miss any future videos. I put out all of my trade recaps in order of how I take the trades. So today, like I said, it's Friday. This is the last trade of the week probably. The focus here is that I want to make sure not to give back profits from those other four winners this week, especially on a trade like this. And what I mean by that, if we flip over to trading view, is that when we weigh all the probabilities in this technical setup. If it isn't an A setup, you want to make sure that you're not hitting it with as much size as you would a perfect setup. But we have to take that back a step further and think, well, what makes a perfect setup? You have to have parameters. We use indicators and price action and a few other things to read each chart every day and gauge those probabilities. Now this morning, there's a couple things wrong with this Euro AUD trade here on the 15 minute. If we start on the four hour time frame, just to kind of get an idea for the higher time frame trend, you see overall, this is clearly log biased, right? We're outside the eight EMA coming down right now here, but that doesn't mean we're short biased overall. Overall here, this is still a long biased pair on the four hour and on the one hour, it's coming down over the last few days, kind of sideways. But again, when you zoom out, you see overall, it's still in that uptrend with the 800 EMA on the bottom. If we take it to the 15 minute today, the idea is that we're looking for it to come lower based on the TDI, EMAs, and movement yesterday. So you can see yesterday, which was Thursday, we saw a huge move down, about 450 pips. Now today, from the start of the Asian range till about midnight, it's moved 228. So it's a massive Asian range. The volatility here, because of everything going on in the world right now, because of the coronavirus, the volatility has been massive. So we're seeing bigger moves than we were three months ago. But back to what I didn't really like about this trade. So I now explain to you why I like the short bias, where that came from. If we measure the Asian range, which I have other videos on this, um, on the channel, so you can check that out as well. It's the first eight hours of the day. You can see we're actually still trading within that range. And what that tells me is it, because of my testing, because of this system that I use, the A1, D1, and D2 systems, if we don't break out of that initial high and initial low set during the Asian session here and here, that tells me we could trade between that high and low all day. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not money to be made short down to that low at 76 pips. My risk here is only 30. That still would be over 2R. So if I can get to low a day, look at what my notes say. Low a day would be a great, uh, low a day would be great since it's the range, since it's in the range, if I could talk. So again, I know that this area could be a take profit level because we're in this Asian range. So that's the first thing to think about. The second thing is if you look at the EMAs, you see how the 200 EMA is above the 800. That's the white line above the blue line. That could be better if that 200 EMA was below. Now, I'm not saying that it's not coming down and that's not a reason to stay out of the trade, but it's important to acknowledge the fact that it could be better. CBB could be better. And the last thing we want to definitely take note of is this divergence that we see on the bottom with this rising RSI here, right? I can blow this up so you can really see. Rising RSI here from yesterday. and falling price action here. So we are divergent, we're in the Asian range and the EMAs could be better. Now that doesn't mean there's not money to be made short and that's why I still have my position in. But that's also why I'm not hitting it as an A setup. I took it as a C setup with very small risk. Listen, if it goes down to the low of day, I still put two, maybe 3% in my account depending on how low it actually goes. Only with about 1% at risk. So it makes sense to be in this trade even though it's not perfect. It's the best one that I could find this morning. Some of the people were looking at GBP USD. I think buying it here after the move yesterday made a lot of sense. Some people were looking to buy it here. That's already moving higher. If you take a look, 60 pips already there. Some people were looking at GBP NZD off the 50 this morning. That's 100 pips higher. So these GBP pairs looked like they were moving up and it looked like Euro pairs were gonna move down. I picked Euro AUD and we're gonna see how it works out. So now you should understand the divergence, the Asian range, where those levels are coming from and why I didn't give this an A grade on the setup and then 
That in turn is why I didn't hit it with as much risk as I could have if I wanted to. Make sense? If it doesn't, please drop a comment. I want to make sure you guys understand. Past that, we're going to let this roll for a little bit longer, candle by candle. It looks like it's going to try to pull the 8 and the 21 down as the TDI holds this sell zone. So I'm rated about break even. You see, down two pips, down one pip. Not worried about this thing in the slightest yet. So candle by candle, I'm going to give it more time. We're three minutes away from the 615 open. We'll take it at 615. We'll take it at 630. And hopefully we see this thing make its way towards low a day. If it does and it holds the 8 EMA, I will stay in the trade candle by candle as long as I can. But I want to, if possible, put my fifth winner in the bag here for the week. So I appreciate you guys being here. Stay with me. Let's see how this thing plays out. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below. If you want to learn about how I'm identifying this divergence entry, the D1 entry, please just reach out to me or hit the links in the description. There's information there on how you can get started learning these repeatable processes, learning this repeatable system that I use every single day. All right, guys, I'm back. It's 6.50 now. So I just closed half the trade at about 1R, a little bit more than 1R. The reason for that is because, like I said in the first clip, this is a C setup. So as you can see, I only have one position of the two still left in 50-50. They were split my risk between the two. So I just closed one completely and I moved the stop loss on this other position into profit. So if you look at the one minute here, you can see from our entry, it was sideways for a little bit, but it moved down to about 1R. We can measure that here, I'll show you about 43 pips. The stop here initially was about 30. So like I said, a little over one R. That's where I took 50% off and I now put the stop loss in profit on the rest of this so I can't lose any money on this C setup. I wanna just point out one more thing here on the 15 minute that I didn't really touch on as much as I should in the first clip. You see this divergence on the bottom here on the 15 minute? So the fact that we're in the Asian range and the fact that we have this divergence on the bottom, that tells me that as much as this looks like it could come lower, RSI coming through the market sentiment line, trend line coming down, it could hold the eight EMA all day. As much as that's true, this divergence tells me it might be a little choppy. It might change. It might not break this zone that we have at the low of day here. It might not break that. You can't assume that it will on a Friday, on any day. You just take it candle by candle. And I don't want to lose any money on a C setup. So like I said, the stop loss is locked. Let me, last point. Again, the only reason that I'm in here before this A1 entry, this would be that shift here as the RSI comes through. The only reason I was in before was because we had the D1 signal in here. So now we have a D1 entry inside an A1 entry, and that's powerful. That tells me that this could be something that does break for a new low a day and does move as much as it did maybe yesterday, 400 pips, maybe. We'll take it candle by candle. You never know. So it's 6.52, we're almost at seven o'clock. Not a lot of high impact news today at all. Nothing crazy. If you take a look here at Forex Factory, nothing crazy today. See, nothing red. So we're just gonna give it time. Candle by candle, we're gonna let it breathe. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. I'll keep you posted. So it's a few minutes after seven o'clock, about 7.22. As you can see, I am out of the trade. I just got stopped in profit on the remaining piece a few minutes ago. At most, this thing moved about 2R from my entry, about 60 pips with a 30 pip stop. So still a good trade, especially on a C setup. I want to show you the PL here. You can see my best close on that 50% of it was at about 25 pips. The rest of it got stopped in profit. So in total, a little bit more than half a percent gain. But now, if you add yesterday's small win with today's small win, it puts over 1.5% in my account just with two simple trades that really weren't that painful. Today was more painful than yesterday, so both of them really were very easy trades, and that's the kind of small, consistent bags that I like to catch. It's easy, it's pain-free, and now I'm done trading by 7.30 in the morning. And it's Friday, we're on lockdown here, so there's not really anything for me to go do anymore, which kind of sucks, but at least I'm done trading and I don't need to push it. I will keep an eye on the charts and see if there's anything else that presents, but again, with this being a C setup, if we look at the 15 minute really quick here, with this being a C setup, with this having the divergence on the bottom as it does, being still in the Asian range, we might just see resistance to the low of day. We might not get a breakout here, especially on a Friday. Right now, UK Prime Minister Johnson just tested positive for coronavirus, so that's some breaking news that might impact the market. Probably not too much, but just something to take note of. I think you're just going to see more and more cases here, and that's just going to feed the panic, feed the fear even more. I'm hoping that this does pass quickly, but you, you really can't even say. This is like once in a lifetime kind of thing. This has never happened before. So we're just all taking it day by day. But now is the time to start making money from home. Now is the time to start like getting involved in something that can give you full control over your financial future, whether it's trading, whether it's some other digital business, now is the time. But for me, trading is way easier than getting into drop shipping or Amazon, all that stuff. You know what I mean? That's all crowded. Trading, even if it is crowded, it just gets bigger. The market gets more volume and you can catch bigger moves. 
So here, I will watch this to see if it holds the 8 EMA, but this pin, really, I'm glad to be out of this trade. It shows me a lot of weakness. We see the RSI now actually rising, if you look at the bottom here, from today. Last night, right before midnight, it set that low and it's been rising. So that could actually tell us that this is coming up. So it's good to be out. We'll look for another good trade. But if we don't see anything today, five wins on the week. Come back next week and do it again. So I hope you found value. Drop a comment if you have any questions. Make sure you're subscribed and give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video here today. And I'll see you guys in the next trade.